Hello everyone and a very warm welcome back to the VBS Community Stadium here at Gander Green Lane as we prepare for the forthcoming 23-24 league season, our third season in EFL League Two. And thank you James and everyone at Sutton United FC TV for taking the time this afternoon to film this uh, brief update. And first of all, if I may, uh, many apologies for radio silence over the last few months. Uh, it's not that there hasn't been anything going on, I can assure you. And Mike Dowling, actually, of Sutton Podcast fame, nudged me the other day and said, do you know, Adrian, you actually haven't done your promised video of the training ground in Harlington. And he's right, of course, and we will do that. That'll be next up. But for now, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time bringing you back to Gander Green Lane before we start the new season, just to familiarise yourselves with some of the changes which have been taking place down here at the lane over the last few months. Um, there's some of the stuff that's been completed. There's still work in progress, as you'll see. And also want to just allude to one or two of the plans and projects that are going to be taking place over the coming months too. But before we do that, I want to put on record, please, my personal and the club's thanks to the amazing work done by so many volunteers over the summer months down here uh, at Gander Green Lane. Uh, an extraordinary amount of work done by so many people. We had an army of volunteers here on Sunday who spent the whole day uh, clearing the place, cleaning the place up, sweeping it, jet washing seats. Uh, weeding etc and uh, we've had the so-called Tuesday crew which has turned out to be the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and indeed on occasion Saturday and Sunday crew principally led of course by John and also Paul and Mike and others uh, without whom we simply wouldn't have been able to be ready for the start of the season so heartfelt thanks to all of those people you're the absolute lifeblood of this club so without further ado let's just have a little stroll around and see what you can expect when you come down here to the lane hopefully very soon indeed and of course our list of volunteers goes beyond those who are doing stadium maintenance work and other work in and around the ground it also extends to everyone who has helped over the months and of course during the season in the office and also here in the shop on a day-by-day -day basis for whom whose work we're extremely grateful um, ticketing for the new season, well, we've uh, just embarked on a brand new ticketing partnership with a company called Kaizen Ticketing, and um, they've come up with a brand new snazzy look and feel to our tickets for next season. Here it is, this is what it looks like, and these will be available to buy on match day as normal from Shan and from Mags in the ticket booth next to the club shop here, and these are the ones that will be sent out to our opposing teams too. Of course, the best value will still be to buy online in advance, and for those of you who have yet to purchase, or collect for that matter, your season ticket, this is what it looks like for the forthcoming season. We have boxes of them waiting for uh, your collection in the uh, off main office uh, if you wish to have a, a hard copy uh, of a season card as well as the digital online version. Um, I would stress that for those of you who have yet to purchase a season ticket for the forthcoming season, to do so, it represents magnificent value for EFL League Two football. If you're planning to come to more than half the games this season, this is the way to do it. It gets you in free of charge to the friendlies and it also ensures that you get priority access, of course, for every league game. And we've got three rather attractive ones starting the season off where the capacity of our stadium will be challenged, we hope. And of course, uh, priority access to any cup ties for the season. So great value. Please do uh, consider, if you haven't renewed or bought for the forthcoming season, your season ticket for the 23-24 season to support Matt Jason and our growing and tremendous squad of players for the new season. Now, in addition to the ticketing team, our events and team have also been extremely busy over the summer. May, June and July are tough months for football clubs, of course, income-wise. And we have a great facility down here at Gander Green Lane. And Ed and Sam and Ryan and the team have been working really hard to maximise the use of those facilities, both internally and externally at the stadium. And there have been various events held at the fan zones, both at the away and here at the home end of the ground, as well as other parties and functions in the internal rooms too. Now, we've just actually spent last Sunday moving the marquee from the away end to the home end. Uh, as you can see, this is work in progress. The home fan zone 
won't be in operation until the first league game against Notts County, when everything will be all spick and span here and ready for you, plus a few surprise attractions too to get everyone down here as early as possible in support of our great club. The other slight change that we've seen here in order to be able to accommodate that is that we've made uh, some space over here to the left. The skip will be removed, I promise, by the time we start. This will enable coaches to turn, uh, way coaches to turn more readily and then house emergency vehicles, um, uh, police and ambulances, etc. should they be required in that area, meaning that the area here to eat and drink and uh, mill and meet, meet your friends is uh, a much more amenable space for everybody. So thanks again to all that hard work done by so many people over the summer months uh, at a time when obviously that income is really important to the football club. So just before we go out to the main stadium and have a look round see what you can expect come match day whether it's this Saturday in the pre-season friendly against Reading or Tuesday against Millwall or the forthcoming league campaign starting on the 5th of August against Notts County. Let's just have a little look in the inside of the main building here to show you one or two of the uh, changes and we hope you'll agree improvements to some of the internal rooms too. For those of you with 1898 club membership for the forthcoming season, a nice new bright environment for you, I hope you'll agree. Some new furniture, some new uh, pictures and prints on the wall and shirts, lovely new clock over there, a whole new comfortable ambiance for you to enjoy your pre and post match Sutton United experience. Okay, so what have we done with the central hub, the players bar where hopefully it all happens before and after games in particular with the strike as a key draw and hopefully celebrating another fantastic home performance. So in here we've stripped the place bare and repainted it, whole new fresh Liquor paint throughout, new televisions, new prints on the wall, a whole new theme behind you and new furniture here too. Hopefully this is an area which is buzzing in a, in a post-match environment. The other two rooms down here, the NBA lounge will remain obviously principally in place for pre-match hospitality uh, and then all circumstances permitting for drinking in there afterwards as well unless it's hired out. And the president's room in the far corner uh, is now going to be principally used, we hope, for individual parties, including children's parties on match day. Another attempt for us to ensure that we maximise the use of every centimetre of space we've got here to everyone's benefit. The boardroom too has had a, a bit of love over the summer. New table, new, new chairs and new carpet up here for the first time in a while. Grateful thanks to Ed for that, actually. I didn't realise that carpet laying was part of your repertoire of skills, old boy. Ah, that intoxicating smell of freshly mown grass. As Ben from Sports Turf here is already starting to mark out the pitch for the new campaign. The goals are going up, the lines are going down. It's getting close, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait. Now, now we're out in the stadium itself, what changes can you expect out here for the forthcoming season? Well, on this side of the ground, not a huge amount, apart from some fantastic maintenance work by our Tuesday crew. I keep calling them that, and they're not, are they? They're every day a week at the moment, but that, that's, that's what we call them, and we love them to bits. They've actually now completed the dugouts here. We've got a new uh, tank in place here. And if you saw the activity of the last couple of weeks with weeding and cleaning and sweeping and jet washing of the, the seats, you'd have been as proud of them as I and all my fellow officers at the club are too. Fantastic work there. Look forward to seeing you all and, and, and the fruits of their labour uh, at, the, at, the, at the forthcoming friendly matches. But it's over the far side of the ground where we're going to go next, the park side, where most of the structural changes have taken place in the summer, but also where the plans for the future will lie. And I just wanted to bring you up to speed with where we are on that side of the ground right now. James, how good was it as we walked around the ground to smell that paint, that deep amber paint on all of the crush barriers as we walked round? Brand Sutton United, eh? Not bad. Anyway, here we are on the park side and I talk to you now from the site of the former Goodlift stand, which is obviously our area where we accommodated all our wheelchair users. Now, as everybody is aware, Sutton United is in a position where we need to ensure that we are able to accommodate 2,000 seats in the coming months. And clearly the park side of the ground 
is the area identified for that specific task. So the work that's been going on in, in the last couple of months is phase one, if you like, of that development to ensure that the area is cleared so that when the time is ripe for us to do so, we're in a position to be able to act very promptly and swiftly as our, our chosen accommodation of that stand is uh, delivered and then very quickly erected. So right now what we've done as part of that phase one was to remove the good lift stand and we've also as we'll see in a minute removed the temporary stand at the far end of the uh, Parkside Terrace 2 as part of that phase one project. What's that, what that has meant in the short term is that we're now going to be accommodating our wheelchair users in another part of the ground, which I'll show you in a second. But in the interim, in order to ensure that we maintain our minimum 5,000 capacity for the forthcoming season, we've been permitted freestanding in this particular area here. And the much loved mound terrace behind us now has a totally unencumbered view of the pitch and we're able to maximize the capacity of that particular area right now. So. In the short term for this season, to start with at least, this mound terrace will be fully in operation to its maximum capacity. We'll also have ability for people to free stand in, in front of the uh, uh, fence here behind me. And obviously the, the Roses Burger Grill, etc., is will be available here behind, um, behind some barriers behind it. So we're now gonna take a little stroll down through the Parkside Terrace to the other side of it to demonstrate the other element to phase one. So here we are now on the former site of the temporary away stand you'll remember over on the uh, far side of the ground by the uh, corner flag between the corner flag and the parkside terrace. We've decided that this area in phase one of the development program uh, for us to get to the stadium capacity required of us uh, by the end of next season at uh, the end of this season um, is to turn this into the designated wheelchair accessible area of the ground. So to that end we are utilising the existing shelter here which accommodates three plus three carers and that will be in operation straight away for the pre-season friendlies. You'll note that behind me as well we've actually lowered the fence so the view from this part of the ground is arguably one of the best in the stadium from that perspective you can almost touch the action. Going forward, we've actually reutilised the old dugouts that we had um, prior to the new ones being in place and they are going to be inserted next to it here on the, my right hand side and each of those will hold four wheelchairs plus four carers, so eight in total plus the three on this side that will be 22 people accommodated on this side of the ground, 11 with wheelchairs and 11 carers, which is an increase obviously in two from the previous version. Now this is work in progress right now, whilst this one is in operation our apologies for the fact that for the pre-season friendlies that's all we're going to be able to offer, but by the time Notts County visit us here on the 5th of August this will be a pristine side of the ground with all the relevant facilities that you'd expect and these two uh, areas here will be in full operation to that end uh, with as I say a great view of the action. Okay ladies and gentlemen so there you have it there the changes to the stadium made so far and they're the plans behind phase one of what we hope to be a very exciting development on the park side of the ground in the coming months. In the meantime the Collingwood Road end of the ground will remain the accommodation for our away fans. The terrace behind me as you know, holds 654 people coming in through gates 9, 10, 11 and 12 over here. Gate C turnstiles 9, 9 to 12 with a fan zone behind serving uh, great quality food and drink. And then at the far end, you have 282 seats in yellow. They're also accommodating our away fans, which in total is a minimum of 936 away fans here at the lane. Now, as we know, with... Uh, Notts County coming on the 5th of August and Gillingham shortly thereafter and AFC Wimbledon there's a very good chance that actually we will be making the um, what we call TARDIS Terrace on the far side they're also available for away fans increasing that capacity of the ground by a further 429 for away fans that's a lovely flexible area that we decide on match by match 
uh, and the whole configuration of the ground now has enabled us to ensure that we comply with the excess of 5,000 capacity with already phase one starting to be put in place on the park side of the ground to ensure that we reach the eligibility criteria required of us for the end of this coming season. So I would urge you again with that more limited, slightly limited capacity um, and with such attractive fixtures coming up in the first month of the season it's likely that there'll be high demand for tickets for those games so if you haven't bought your season ticket please do so uh, and when the tickets come out make sure you're the first amongst them to buy if you're not a season ticket holder so that you can get behind uh, our wonderful team i personally can't wait to see you this ground full again and buzzing as we embark upon our third season in the efl and really look forward to seeing you all then if not at the three pre-season friendlies then at that game against notts county on the fifth when this place is going to look an absolute picture in the meantime it's forever amber